What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So I'm talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about The Nun 2. We'll be talking about The Conjuring 4. We'll be talking about Chucky Season 3. And then we'll round it out by talking about A Quiet Place Day 1. Just going to share a small tidbit for my A Quiet Place fans out there. Joseph fans, Lupita Nyong'o fans. Those of you who are anticipating that upcoming prequel. So just to kick this video off. We're going to talk about The Nun 2. So Michael Chaves or Michael Chavez, I guess is how it's pronounced, was asked what happened to Frenchie at the end of The Nun 2. And apparently that's up to interpretation from what he has now disclosed in a recent interview with Collider. He said this while speaking with Perry from Collider, to be more specific. Uh, he said Valak either gets back into him or Valak might still be in there. And I think that's really open to interpretation. There's definitely a moment, there's a look between the two of them at the very end of that. He's talking about Irene and Frenchie. I think says a lot. I think that there's definitely something there and you could just see that. Irene has got a second sight. She knows that she sees things that aren't always there. And I feel like, watch her eyes, watch her eyes in the end. So, did we, here's my thoughts. Did we not have an idea of what we were going to do next? Because I'm under the impression he's still possessed. Because if he isn't, then he most definitely has to be repossessed. Because if he's not, then this film has now created a massive plot hole for the Conjuring universe. Also, just a side comment, but Irene and Lorraine seem to be connected after all. A lot of people for years had been speculating that there's a relation or something that ties those two together. And it seems as though from what the ending of The Nun 2 showcased, both Lorraine and Irene have gotten their powers or their gifts, their visions, they both seem to have gotten, it's been teased at least from my perspective, that they both got this from the St. Lucy figure that's introduced in The Nun 2. But you guys can let me know what you think about Michael Chavez's comments and what do you think about Irene and Lorraine actually possibly being linked as many people were speculating on for many years. What do you think about all of that? I do not like the fact that that is open to interpretation. I don't think that should be open to interpretation. I think it should be very cohesive and very apparent that he's still possessed. I don't think he should have been exercised in any capacity and I don't think he should have to be repossessed. He should have just been left alone. I think he's still possessed. Diving into The Conjuring 4. Still talking about The Conjuring Universe. Patrick Wilson recently, back in July, stated this when speaking to Collider about possibly directing The Conjuring 4. Uh, he said, I don't know he was speaking to Chris Killian, by the way. Shout out to you, Chris. I know you follow me. He was speaking to Chris Killian. He said, I don't know. All those guys are obviously my friends and I know them well. And I wouldn't dare try to pitch myself for something I didn't feel passionate about. So the honest to God truth and I really mean this and it sounds so lame, but I would have to see the story. I know we'll be taking care of his characters and actors. I love those movies so much. I love David Leslie Jones or Dave, David Leslie Johnson and all the writing that he's done. That being said, if I've learned anything from this movie, it's what James told me, which is make it yours, make it personal. So I know that the next movie that I will choose to do or that chooses me, it will have to be something extremely personal that I can shape to things that I believe in. I don't think here's my thoughts. I don't think that the main conjuring films are broken in any capacity. So I would love to see them let Akilah Cooper have another crack at this in an appropriate sandbox and not the messed up one that she was kind of subjected to try to fix with this nun franchise. I would love to see Akilah Cooper's contributions to the conjuring Four, the conjuring trilogy the conjuring which we know is the main set of films in this universe those movies are not as broken continuity wise they're more cohesive and i think there's less that someone like akila cooper would have to try to fix so her talent can get to be on display in full effect if she is joining this sandbox instead of the broken ones she joined with the nun franchise patrick also directing the conjuring four doesn't sound bad to me because he wasn't the problem with insidious five i think the problem with insidious five and i think a lot of people can agree on this whether you like it or not was that the screenplay was sort of lacking so diving into chucky season three we got some first images from Chucky season three over the weekend. Some first looks at episode one, which has now been confirmed to be titled Murder at 1600. And these images caption or these image captions happen to reveal the characters that were speculated from the audition tape. So here's the official rundown of America's first family since Chucky is now living in the Oval Office with the president and his family. So we're going to be following the Collins, or at least that's who Chucky is living with in the Oval Office. They're the Collins family. This family consists of Henry Collins, Grant Collins, Charlotte Collins, 
and President James Collins, who we know is portrayed by Devin Sawa, who is returning to the series after we were led to believe he would be stepping away. Now, I'm still thinking about that America runs on secret, not Duncan line from from the audition tapes, because these people must be hiding something suspicious. If you look up the title of this episode and read up on this Warner Brothers movie it's titled after, you might be able to figure out or at least speculate what you think is going to happen in this first episode. My guess, wait for it, someone dies. I know, that's so shocking. I don't know what episodes Lexi, Devin, and Jake will appear in, but I can say this. They're still obviously expected to appear because they were out filming in Canada. I see a lot of you guys freaking out that they're not going to appear. I will say this. If they aren't in the first four episodes, I guess that would be a reason to be concerned. I don't know what episodes they're in. So once I know what episodes they're in, if I'm allowed to, I will tell you guys they appear in the first four episodes. I will say that. But there's also apparently going to be another first look at the season happening later this week on Sci-Fi, I think. So be on the lookout for that. Just check your local TV listings or check the Sci-Fi schedule. I see you guys talking about it on Twitter all the time. Diving into the last topic here, A Quiet Place Day 1. A Quiet Place Day 1, we know, has or is going to be this prequel to the first two movies, showcasing us a different set of new characters and them tackling or trying to survive the very first day these aliens, these creatures arrive on planet Earth. I've talked about the fact that there was a test screening this past weekend, not weekend, but past week on like Thursday, I would say. Uh, a friend of mine was in attendance. They loved it. They loved the chemistry between Joseph and Lupita Nyong'o's character. They thought it was very suspenseful, very moving. I also told you guys how the ending apparently might be one of the most moving pieces in a horror film that, that we have next year, if it's executed as well as it sounds on my paper. So I wanted to talk about Lupita's character, share her name with you guys, and also kind of help you understand joseph's fate going into the movie i'm not gonna spoil joseph's fate for anyone that wants to click away i'm not spoiling it so as you know again my friends saw it last week they loved it for the most part only thing they really were knocking it for was the pacing and we're mentioning how some other people in attendance didn't like the fact that we didn't learn too much about these creatures but my opinion less is more so i'm i'm glad we're not learning too much about them so joseph we know is playing a character named eric he's been described as very emotional but people still loved him Lupita is playing Sammy. Now, I will say this. I don't know if Sammy is short for something, and Sammy might not actually be the name, but that's what I was told. Just in case it's wrong, though, at least you know that her name does start with an S. Here's a little tease. As, as emotional as Eric has been described, you might be finding yourself while watching this movie, you might be finding yourself asking, well, why isn't Sammy so emotional? Because you might when you see the movie you'll come to find that sammy has a lot more grounds to be emotional as opposed to eric's character that all makes sense when you guys see the movie next year but i did want to also help you guys understand something or at least hint about joseph's fate if you want to know what his fate will be pay attention to the first time we meet him pay attention to the scene we first meet him in that is all I will say. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.